right to the rocks. Then I make that shit back. Run up on me, get shot in the back. It's your team. If you have a couch, I'm going to make it. Dad, it's three got. Pops, today we got another mini doc, man. We got. Shout out to the Chris College kid. He just he dropped the documentary on suburban drill beat turns into a deadly gang war in Spokane, Washington. Wow. Interesting, right? Washington. You ever been to Washington? Pops. No, I've been to Oregon. Yeah, we've been to Oregon. That's just tough, right? It's beautiful, beautiful place. Does it just rain in Seattle and all those places like Washington? Yeah, it's like? sad. It's sad and rainy. <laughs> like London town, right? Yes, yeah, sir. It's sad and rainy. Is it because of the equator? Because like the London is like the same point. Yeah, I mean, not no, mom. I mean, not no. <laughs> All right. No, it's where the weather breaks between the northern Canadian cold air and the warm air of the Southern California. Okay, it's Jerry TV, via B Scott channel. Follow me, Jerry TV, Follow me, Matt. Pops react. If it's hey. your first time tuning in, subscribe to the channel. Join the Discord. Let's have a right too, right? You say we play. No more talk to this. Yeah. When bodies started dropping in a crazy back and forth suburban gang war. Police had no idea what to think or how to handle the deadly beefs. Welcome to the suburbs of Spokane, Washington. Those gunshots rang out in this residential neighborhood as people slept. Just two days earlier, four people were shot at Dutch Jake Park in West Central Spokane. Wow. Spokane is ranked in the 100 best places to live and is oh, historically shit. known as one of the safest places in America. Well, With that being but said- But people try to act like there's no beef in suburban areas either. People have beef, like you have beef with the local neighbor, maybe, right, in the suburban area. Yeah, yeah. Over the trash can. Not gang, not gang. Stuff. Exactly, what? It, it's interesting, though, because why do these shootings always take place in parks where there's little kids? I guess because that's like the meeting place, right? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I've had a recent all. gang problem and police are not sure what to do about it. I hate saying this, it's kind of like a wild, wild west. The suburban gangs here are self-made imitations of well-known gangs across the USA. Generally, we have Bloods, Crips, oh. uh, Gangster Disciples. And just like their counterparts, these guys are responsible for a lot of chaos in the streets. Officers found one person dead in the street and another victim shot in the face but still alive. A wow. short time later, police learned two other shooting victims had been dropped off at a hospital. Nowadays, everyone wants to be a gangsta. From the deadly streets of gangsta. Chicago to the middle of the sticks, everyone is claiming a gang, throwing up hand signs, smoking the ops, and repping a set. For some of these white guys that look like pretenders wearing a Halloween costume, they are actually really involved in deadly suburban back and forths that are claiming the lives of countless young men. Oh, wow. Influenced by the music, they are creating gangs in the suburbs, becoming real drillers and catching bodies just like their favorite rappers. The deadly drill culture created from the war in Chicago had a huge impact on culture in the United States. First, it impacted nearly all the hoods in America and the drill scene made its way into nearly every state now in the year 2024, there are even drillers in the hoods of Alaska. Next, it made its way into the suburbs and what started off as kids pretending to be their favorite rappers turned into deadly back and forths claiming the lives of suburban kids and shocking their communities. For this story, we are going to Spokane, Washington. Ranked in the 100 best places to live, this is not an area that is used to gangs and violence. So when police found the body of a young man riddled with bullet holes the result of a deadly gang war, they did not know where to start. They were aware of a growing gang problem in their city and now started seeing the ramifications as bodies started dropping. For 15-year-old Preston Grisoriak, he thought of himself as a gangsta and jumped off the gangsta, suburban porch gangsta. and wanted to involve himself with the suburban gangs in his neighborhood. Gangsta. Preston wasn't an official member, but was affiliated with the suburban Long Beach Crips gang. Oh. A gang based out of Long Beach, Los Angeles made its way to the suburbs of Spokane and they were in a deadly back and forth with the 18th Street Blue Devils. Another suburban set terrorizing the burbs and responsible for a number of different bodies in the suburbs of Washington. Preston, a known trapper in the area when he wasn't busted plays and serving the youth he was online dissing and smoking on the rivals that had passed away at the result of gang activity. Oh, wow. As the disses increased to get revenge for their deceased homies, these sets began to slide and the war was turning deadly. During this time, Preston messages Stephen a member of the rival 18th Blue Devils gang and tells him he has a rack on his head and it's up and he's rolling up and puffing on all his homies that had passed away. Yo. This is when Stephen goes into crash out mode and comes up with a plan to catch Preston lacking so him and his boys from 18th Street can roll him up and turn him into a pack. But they said that they're catching bodies, so is it that safe? Is Spokane that safe? They're out here catching bodies, like suburban kids allegedly? I mean, it could happen anywhere. That's what I'm saying, right? It don't really matter. I've been all over the country, and you could be in the nicest neighborhood, but if there's gang members, 
It's going down. A couple days later, Preston is kicking it with a couple long beach crip homies. They're playing dice, sparking up, and Preston is going in and out of the house, busting traps. When a girl named Daisy, who he had messed around with in the past, but Daisy ended up ghosting Preston, leaving him heartbroken and simping hits up Preston, asking for some work. He's excited for the chance to potentially rekindle what they had. Okay. You can't ever trust these girls from the streets of Chicago to the streets of Philly men always get backdoored and chipped when chasing women. And unfortunately for Preston, this tactic is used by the suburban gangs as well. Steven, who was Preston's main nop, was the big dog in the burbs bro, had his pick of women and was knocking down everything he wanted. <laughs> if you had a girlfriend who was considered bad during this time, I hate to break it to you, but bro definitely cracked. He's glazing. And he was also known as someone who liked getting intimate with more than one lady at a time. Oh, wow. But Preston was not thinking with his head and dapped up his boys and left for the rival's hood to conduct a sale of illegal substances. <laughs> Part of the reason he left was because Daisy like kept blowing picture. up Preston's phone asking over and over where he is and telling Preston to hurry up and get here. And then when Preston arrives around 10.23 at night. You see it again over and over. Over a girl. We just see it. a girl that sets line, like the kids say, they line you up. And this poor kid probably lost his life, right? Julio Fulio. Wow. She know him too. It's so sad. Over and, and over. And then when Preston arrives Back around 10.23 at night. And now the young man at only the age of 15 tragically passes away. Police are shocked. They figure the crime is gang related, but nobody is talking and they have nowhere to look. Eventually, after checking Preston's phone history, they realize the last person he spoke with was Daisy. Daisy, who had recently moved to Spokane with her family from Texas, admitted to police she had reached out to Preston so she could buy some product, but had no idea what was going to happen to him. And at first they believed her. Morgan McAllister, who was the girlfriend of Stephen, who is Preston, the young man who tragically passed away's biggest stop, ends up hearing some suspicious discussions taking place in her house. She asks Stephen if he was responsible for Preston, and he admits what he did to the young man, but because she loves him, she decides not to go to police and stands by her man who was cheating on her this whole time. Stephen at this point is a made man, and he goes up the ranks of his gang, the 18th Street Blue Devils, and they keep dropping songs dissing Preston. Every night, I'm smoking on, you know who packed Heard they on my post, man, I guess they heard the new track He was right about one thing, police were definitely on his posts and had heard the new track But instead of laying low, they kept dropping more and more songs yeah, stupid. Then in a song called Creepin', they explain about the murder and exactly how it went down because of what he did, Steven in a set of almost 50 members yeah. became the number one ranked Blue Devil and was now calling the shots but bro was starting to feel some pressure and had a sense that the cops were closing in on him so him and his main girl Morgan packed their bags and moved down to Vegas where they have a number of 18th Street Blue Devils gang members living. During this time, Morgan starts noticing a change in Steven. To support them financially, just like Walter White, he starts trapping ice and begins using you know, it on Walter a heavy White? basis. From Breaking Bad, that's funny as hell. From Breaking Bad. This but, dude got like dry sense of humor. I got all your jokes, buddy. Yeah, it's so interesting how like, these are literally white boys putting in pain, mm. trapping. I mean, that doesn't mean anything race-wise. Because if, if you're in a poor neighborhood, you got to make shit happen, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, not even if you're in a poor neighborhood. If you're just living that lifestyle. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, if it doesn't matter what color your skin are, where you're from. Like, some dudes is just crazy. So he moves to Vegas, and he starts water white in it, and then press play. <laughs> just like Walter White, he starts trapping ice and begins using it on a heavy basis and becomes more oh, and more abusive oh. towards Morgan. Morgan, who was always covered in bruises and always had a black eye knew things, were only going oh, to get worse as she stayed in bed. I bet you what happened to him was, he's probably bagging it and he's touching it and he started getting hot. From to touching the product and then he probably started using it. Vegas with her boyfriend who had recently taken the life of a 15 year old and his gang buddies. The gang every day was either rapping or trapping and Morgan was feeling very isolated from her family and the beatings were getting worse and worse. She was starting to fear for her life and knew she was going to have to find a way to leave Steven or else she would end up like Preston. 
So she decides to start saving money and eventually saves up enough to purchase a Greyhound ticket. Since she is fully aware of what Preston is capable of, she waits until he gets blackout drunk and sneaks out the house when he passes out and gets on an Uber and heads back for Spokane. Three months after the crime was committed, detectives handcuff Stephen who is feeling cocky and laughing because he thinks he is going to easily beat the charges and return to his suburban gang, the 18th Street Blue Devils. But when they took him into questioning, police knew something he didn't. Stephen had his full 18th Street gang attire on, he was wearing a number 18 Raiders jersey and recently gotten Randy a Moss. number of new gang tattoos showing his allegiance to the 18th Street Blue Devils. Stephen, who is not the brightest bulb in the room, waves his right to an attorney and agrees to speak with detectives something oh, to okay. later regret. Stephen, who has a public snap and Instagram tells oh, police he's Mexican, all so he's not a wild boy. He's a Mexican. He's a guero. No matter what he is, yeah, he, he, he should have should just shut up and not talk to his lawyer about their back and forth online giving them motive for what he had done but claims he had nothing to do with it and it was all a bunch of cap. After an hour of admitting he is a part of the gang admitting a motive for what happened and talking way too much police straight up asks Steven if he was responsible for Preston. A bulb finally goes off in his head and he realizes the situation he just talked himself into and he asks for a lawyer and says he no longer wants to speak with police who laughed and told him you already told us everything we need buddy. It was looking like the king of the burbs was destined for jail but if his ex-girlfriend and all the witnesses remain loyal maybe bro will get out of this situation. Right. Police end up letting him go and he returns to his house in Vegas he is sharing with other gang members. Now that his main girl left he decides to hit up his side girl Daisy who is in love with the suburban thug and jumps on a greyhound and travels all the way to Vegas to be with her lover boy. <laughs> when his old girlfriend finds out about how fast he moved on and she that he was now in. living with Daisy she was heartbroken and decides to take a trip to the police station to spill all the beans and tell the police everything she knows about what Steven did to Preston. She claims wow. Steven around his gang buddies would act tough and laugh about what he did but behind closed doors he was crying to her about it because he felt bad about the fact that Preston was only 15 years old which he did not know at the time. And for Daisy who was living with Preston she had began fearing him just like his ex girlfriend Morgan did. Wow. While indulging in substances with Preston and the gang she had let it slip that she had family members in the rival Crips gang and Preston was extremely angry and said she's lucky she's not rolled up with Preston in the pack they are smoking on. Preston and Daisy were terrorizing Las Vegas, he was using her to set up people to get robbed, and he was also having her sell illegal substances for him, they were deeply involved in the underground criminal world of Las Vegas. Instead of laying low, Steven keeps getting more and more gang tattoos representing the 18th Street Blue Devils. Why? Police are gathering more and more evidence and eventually they get enough for an arrest. The 5 foot 9 150 pound suburban gangsta's luck had run out. People always glamorize the gangsta lifestyle but the fact of the matter is, if you're out there catching bodies and committing crimes especially today with all the cameras out there, you're either going to get arrested and spend the rest of your life in a prison cell or you're going to be caught by your rivals and end up in a grave. The streets are undefeated. And now, only three months after the heinous crime against 15-year-old Preston, Stephen was handcuffed and charged with first-degree murder, and now it's up to the courts to prove that Stephen was responsible. Stephen was feeling uh -oh. arrogant since so much time had passed and was telling news reporters had police had any substantial evidence they would have picked him up earlier. If there was surveillance video that showed me at the crime, they would have grabbed me a lot sooner than over a month and a half. And that arrogance made police want to get all the evidence necessary so he would receive the harshest sentence possible. But Stephen didn't realize he had left critical evidence at the scene and there were key witnesses working with the police. Okay. Police found critical evidence from when Stephen messaged Daisy a month ago and told her to come out to Las Vegas. Police discovered that only two weeks before what happened to Preston Stephen had added Daisy as a friend on Facebook. After a flirty back and forth, everything. they exchanged numbers and added each other on Snapchat where they began Damn, sending photos to one another. From wow. the start, Daisy thought Stephen was the most handsome and the coolest guy she had ever met. She was willing to do anything to get Stephen's validation. And the police knew that. Police also discovered that when they met, they both were in relationships and were going behind the back of their significant other. It was also discovered that when Daisy agrees to move out to Las Vegas to live with Steven that she had never met him in person and her first time meeting him was when they moved in together and began a relationship. And the uh, nail in the wait, coffin Wait, but I thought the situation was that he kind of set her up with that broad, right? It looks like it, but that's kind of, that's the world we live in. I guess it was all virtual relationship. No, but didn't she help him set up that kid to die? 
but all virtually. Wow, this is crazy. We're gonna find out right now. Virtual when police world. discovered a text between Stephen and Daisy saying he wished he could put Preston's scared face on a t-shirt and wear oh. it everywhere he went. Probably Stupid. not the best idea unless you are actively trying to spend the rest of your life in jail. <laughs> But for Steven, he didn't yeah. care about the consequences and wanted everyone to know what he had done. Then when Verizon sent police all of Steven's call records, it was discovered that he called his ex-girlfriend who was at his house sleeping 81 times after committing the crime. And this is when police time. bring Morgan in for questioning to see if she could have had any involvement. With the fear of being charged looming over her head, she tells the police everything. She tells police Stephen parked three blocks from the apartment complex. Wow. Then he walks a couple blocks approaches, Preston whips out his blower and hits him six times. He then starts panicking and decides to jump a nearby fence. Then runs back to his car and as he is driving out of the complex, he accidentally hits a nearby car leaving crucial evidence for police. Police then want to know how he got the blower and she explains that. Matt, who was one of his best buddies and also a fellow 18th Street Blue Devil Good gang Matt. member, oh, was the one that sold Stephen the blower used that in the innocent. crime. He also told Matt the night of the crime about problems he was having with a rival and he said he was going to handle the issue that night. Matt thought he was just going to scare or beat up the kid but never thought there was any chance that Stephen would take things further. But when he did, everyone was proud of him and he was stamped as a general in the 18th Street Blue Devils gang. Matthew said that Stephen was bragging to everyone about what he did and was showing off the fact that there was still blood on his shoes from the crime scene. He took it as far as to start sharing a Spokane News article about the crime with all of his gang buddies. He wanted full credit for what he had done full and credit. wasn't going to be happy unless everyone knew that he had caught a body. Back in the day, criminals wanted to get away with their crimes. Nowadays, criminals want everyone to know so they can get credit and be- Yeah, and blow up and expand the rap career, which is dumb, but he should have just laid low. But you know what happens. I don't know. I guess when I grew up, when stuff Cloud. was done, it wasn't talked about. Yo, you heard who did? Nah, that ain't Bro, because clout is a drug nowadays. People don't even care about the money that comes with the clout. People look at clout like- This is a dumb generation. It's, attention. They it's like a dumb generation. Yeah, it's true. Become a block legend. Police also discovered that hours Correct. after committing three crimes Stephen posts, I'm a made man on his Instagram. Police had also discovered that Preston, who was obsessed with the gangs in his neighborhood, was known to post all of his beefs online and was into it with a number of different suburban sets. Oh, wow. Other witnesses describe how most of the beefs he was getting into wear for attention and that a lot of the threats Stephen would make are mostly cap. Preston, who grew up upper middle class in Spokane, was a really good kid and was excelling in school and nearly had a four-point GPA. But when he too. turned 13, everything in his life started to change. He became fascinated with Chicago Drill and would listen to Chief Keef, Little Dirk, and King Von all day long. His bedroom was covered with posters of Chief Keef and his personality started to change. Wow. He starts skipping Isn't class and his great- Chief Keef influenced a lot of people to start drilling and killing and doing all this trapping? And he's the one in Calabasas like this. He's like this in Calabasas right now. The glorification like of violence has been normalized to the point that it's reaching the suburbs now. Yeah. I mean, it's been reaching the suburbs, right? There's stories back yeah. in the day about that. Like, yeah. Yeah, Ice Cube. Nah, It'd start to plummet. <laughs> and this is when he decides he wants suburbs, to join yeah. a gang just like his favorite rappers and live a life of crime. He started selling illegal substances Why? and associating with the suburban gangs in his neighborhood. He wanted to be just like his favorite rappers and started dissing members of rivals that had passed away. What started off as a costume was turning into reality for the young man. He was now involved with some pretty dangerous people that he had met through the distribution of illegal substances. Wow. Bro had now somehow turned a fascination with drill culture into his day-to-day -day reality. The beef began because Preston was looking for attention and randomly messaged Stephen threatening him for no apparent reason. This was during the pandemic when people were extremely bored and had nothing to do other than get themselves into trouble. And Preston, who considered himself a tough guy, was randomly messaging people and threatening them. But he couldn't have picked a worse time to do this because Stephen and the 18th Street Blue Devils were already on edge because someone was knocking over and vandalizing one of Stephen's fellow 18th Street Blue Devils' deceased gang buddies' candles and Stephen incorrectly thought it was wow. Preston. But it's when Preston starts claiming he has $1,000 on Stephen's head that things really start to escalate. Yeah, you can't see shit like that. This is clearly self-destructive attention-seeking behavior. Yeah. If I had to speculate on why Wait, Preston bro, was doing kid? this, it was- Is Preston that kid that died? Is he used to rap? 
I don't know if that's the same kid. Mm, uh, it looks like it. Who's We're the not sure at all. Let us know in the comments. Because he was not receiving the attention he needed at home, so he was acting out. Stephen believed that he had to do what he did or else it was going to be done to him. But in reality, Preston was not the threat that he made himself out to be and was just a lost 15-year-old that wanted to be noticed. But for Stephen and his defense team, all the threats publicly documented online from Preston gave him a reason for what happened. Stephen's defense team was going hard with the claims about self-defense and were arguing that Stephen must have thought that Preston was strapped up when he saw him and was in fear of his life. Stephen claims when he saw Preston he was reaching for something that he thought was a blower and he had no option but to do what he did. For the first time in a while things were starting to look promising for Stephen and there what? was some believe he may beat the charges or plea down to a lesser charge of manslaughter. But for Preston and his family they were going to do everything in their ability to prevent that from happening and get full justice for him. Unfortunately for Stephen his arrogance ended up being his downfall. The prosecutor was claiming that Stephen's attitude and social media antics before and after the crime are what qualifies what he did as premeditation. Absolutely. And this could be the difference between 15 years or a life sentence. And now it was looking like how in almost all cases related to criminal gangs that the persona Stephen made for himself on social media was going to be the reason for his downfall. It's hard to claim you were genuinely in fear for your life when you are constantly bragging about how you're a stepper and you have no fear of the ops. And now is when the most shocking thing of them all is revealed in court. The blower that Preston was constantly showing off on Instagram and Snapchat in reality was a fake prop he had purchased on the internet. Wow. Preston was a good kid that wanted to be accepted by his peers so he pretended to be something he was not. But then it comes out in court that Stephen had made a critical mistake. Right after committing the heinous crime on a 15-year-old poser, he texted one of his fellow gang buddies. It's done. 1K on me. 1K on me essentially admitting to the crime. Wow. Prosecutors discovered how in order to go up the ranks of the 18th Street Blue Devils you had to put in the Gosh, work. Body. It's a very large crime scene. Ah. And this marks the second shooting at a Spokane park in just the last two days. As goofy and non-threatening as these kids might look, they were committing serious crimes and terrorizing the suburbs. Officers found one person dead in the street Yo, and another victim in shot burbs. in the face but still alive. A short time later, police learned two other shooting victims had been dropped off at a hospital. Why these young men chose a life of crime is what? beyond me and they had become a top priority for police. Those gunshots rang out in this residential neighborhood as people slept. Just two days earlier, four people were shot at Dutch Jake Park in West Central Spokane. Prosecutors argue that Stephen committed this crime in order to go up the ranks in his gang. For all the fakers out there... Bro, I don't know why you gotta be saying Walmart, Italy, Chupa, whatever that means type stuff because, feel me, I be looking fly. I don't shop at Walmart. You don't get it. Nah, he got two flags. He, he said tripping. You got the blood flag and the crit flag. It's funny as hell with the island boy dress. <laughs> I don't be in Walmart. But that means hot stuff because, feel me, I be looking fly. I don't shop at Walmart. You don't get drip like me at Walmart. Wearing Gucci on my toes. So, yeah. Steven was a real one and was now facing real life consequences for what he had done. And things weren't looking good for bro. For the bro, nail in the bro. coffin came when prosecutors played a song made by one of Steven's fellow gang members giving a play-by-play -play of the homicide. Remember how Preston was affiliated with the Long Beach Crips and how Steven had blood on his shoes. If he a real killer from Long Beach, why was he running in? But on the other hand, to be honest, I'm a little screw. Nothing to lose, trying to see blood up on these new shoes. His gang buddy was quoted by prosecutors for saying leave wow. blood up on these new shoes intimate details about the crime not released to the public on a song. Trying to see blood up on these new shoes. Shouldn't have been up on the internet while he was tweaking, all that sneaking. And now he had reiterated the motive given by prosecutors for the crime disrespect on the internet. Shouldn't have been up on the internet while he was tweaking, all that sneaking. And there you have it, a slam dunk That's closed case for prosecutors, oh, yeah. but will the jury spare him because of his age and ethnicity? He was found guilty of all charges, <gasps> but the next question for prosecutors was did Stephen know where Preston was going to be? And here is when the truth about Daisy comes to light. Bro, this picture. Right after the crime, Stephen texted her celebrating what he had just done. Detectives knew that she was not the innocent girl she was pretending to be and was likely involved and responsible for what happened. Recovered messages show that when they first started messaging each other back and forth, Stephen asked her if she was willing to set up men for the gang and she responded, yes. Police were angered about the fact she had been lying to them this whole time. 
It came out that she had her own prior problems with Preston after he got involved with her cousin and she wanted him to pay for it. It was actually Daisy that had came up with the plan to get Preston over to the rival hood. She better be First she tried luring him to a wooded area, but Preston didn't bite the bait. And then she sent him to her aunt's apartment and even offered Stephen her parking space. It wow. ended up being Daisy's cousin, the one that had gotten involved with Preston that revealed the truth to police. She was eventually arrested in Las Vegas and sent back to Spokane to face criminal wow. charges. She got off too. easy and was found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree assault and two counts of that? rendering criminal assistance. Nothing. The reality of the situation is without her setting him up, Preston would still be here today. Yeah. Wow, so you're telling me this girl got conspiracy to murder. She should get charged for murder like who fuck the video ended? Or it just like abruptly you ended. Got sentence? What happened? Yeah, I know, right? I wanna know. But let us know some, let us know the comments. The rest of the story. It's Jerry TV. We had it. And I know how I get so I got stay low now, move my knock. I don't trust no nigga, I don't trust no man, ain't no friends, everybody get shot. You never